Before we move deeper into thermal physics, it's really important that we clarify a few uh, physics definitions and ideas. So first of all, if you think about a hot cup of tea, and we've got the hot water and milk in the cup, that substance in there has energy, and we call it internal energy internal energy. It's energy that is to do with the particles. That's why it's called internal, because it's inside the, the substance. Now, internal energy has got two parts to it. Firstly, we've got the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of the particles. This is the energy due to their movement. And they could be vibrating, or if it's a gas, they could just be flying in straight lines until they collide with another molecule or particle or a wall. Now, this kinetic energy is also called thermal energy. So thermal energy and kinetic energy of the particles is the same thing. It's movement energy. And this is where we get the measurement of temperature, how hot something is. So something which is very hot, has a high temperature, has a very high kinetic energy of particles, has a lot of thermal energy. Now another part of internal energy, which is added on, is called the potential energy. The potential energy and that's to do with how the, the particles are bonded together. So, for example, in the bonds between particles. A good example of how potential energy in a substance can change is when that substance changes state, when it, for example, melts or when it boils. So, for example, if you were to add thermal energy to ice, thermal energy to ice, and if that ice is at a temperature of zero degrees Celsius, then that's its melting point. Any thermal energy that we put in to the ice will not raise the temperature anymore. What it will do, though, is to break. It will be used to break the solid ice bonds. And once all that thermal energy has broken all of those solid ice bonds, we'll have a puddle of water and no ice. And the liquid, therefore, the liquid has a higher potential energy. I'll just put PE for potential energy in its bonds. In its bonds. We've had to put energy in to break the solid ice bonds, and those are very strong bonds, uh, and that has formed weaker liquid bonds. We've raised the potential energy of the, of the water. So that's internal energy made up of kinetic or thermal energy and potential energy. And that's what's in your cup of tea. So with that in mind, one other definition now. If you've got a lot of thermal energy, so, for example, here we've got something which is very hot, and we've got something over here which is cold. The particles of this material are vibrating, uh, moving very quickly. That's why it's hot. It's got a lot of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is high. The cold part over here has not got so much kinetic energy, so the kinetic energy is lower. 
When you put them together, the particles here will start bumping into particles here and transferring their kinetic energy from hot to cold. And this process, where energy moves from a hotter body to a cooler body, is called heating or heat. Heat is the flow of thermal energy. Heat is the flow or transfer of thermal energy. Thermal meaning the kinetic energy, the movement energy of the particles bumps into the others and that transfers the thermal energy and that's what we call heat or heating. So whenever you use the word heat, that refers to a transfer of energy. It's not actually energy in the body. We can't say that there is a lot of heat energy in this body. That doesn't make sense because heat is about flow. We can say there's a lot of thermal energy in this body. That makes sense. Good. I hope that has clarified a few things. So let's take a look at this flashcard now. When a substance is heated, there is a transfer of thermal energy, thermal energy into the substance. So that's heating, that's transferring thermal energy. This transfer of energy increases the substance's internal energy. So I hope that's helped. And as we move into more thermal physics, these definitions will come in very useful.